Good evening. This is the elementary school workshop. Uh, we're going to start, we're starting a little bit late because Loretta Pond is not here. She has a very good excuse, however, because her son is, is playing in a basketball it's game a or it's basketball awards tournament. ceremony. I mean, banquet. Basketball banquet, but she will be here shortly. I have started every budget meeting by reminding everybody that there are some uncertainties, and I can see a lot of people who have heard this before, but I'll just go over them again. This budget is based on our getting $305,000 of additional state subsidy. That's an increase of about 17% over what we got last year. That came somewhat as a surprise to us, and uh, the state formula finally, after many, many years, worked in our favor. But there is, of course, a budget crisis in the state, and uh, one never knows what uh, whether that could be dealt off the table in last minute budget negotiations sometime in May or June. Uh, we also have uh, the uncertainty of uh, negotiations with uh, the vast majority of our employees uh, and the outcome of those negotiations is of course uncertain. Uh, finally we have the situation of our buildings both long and short term. In the uh, short run, we do have to do something next summer probably about the uh, portables. Uh, we might do something about the middle school roof and we probably should include in our budget and we'll be discussing these items later, not tonight, but at, uh, on Saturday. Uh, we should allow some funds for the school space needs committee which uh, has, has asked us to fund uh, a significant amount so that we can do architectural and engineering studies of our buildings and ascertain what we have to do in the long run to bring them up to snuff. Uh, and in the long run, uh, we have the cost of whatever that program is. It could easily be several million dollars and could easily add several hundred thousand dollars of debt service to our budget. So having started off on those cheery notes, I turn the floor over to our elementary school principal, Barbara Powers, and assistant principal, Nancy St. John. Thanks, Peter. I'd really like to um, start off tonight by thanking all the faculty and staff from Pine Cove School for coming out in support of this budget. And Nancy and I really appreciate you being here. I see a lot of you here. And also our Pine Cove parents and interested community members for taking time out tonight to come. We um, started our budget deliberation process this year differently than we have in past years, and that was with a real clear understanding that the economic time space by this community was, uh, was going to really uh, uh, require us to do some very conservative budgeting this year in team uh, meetings in December. And let me digress real quickly. Our teams, uh, all of which operate in the different schools at the Pond Cove School level, uh, consist of about 14 members, including a representative from every grade level, special education, allied arts, um, our, com our curriculum uh, resource people, administration, and secretary, um, met together in December and talked about how are we going to go about processing a budget this year that would be real supportive of the needs of Pine Cove children and also very responsive to the needs of this community. We talked about it at length. We looked at all of our options and decided what we would like to try to pull together is a budget that would uh, be reflective of the movement of large populations of children through our school, but also uh, not eliminate any particular program and rather downsize some of our offerings so that the integrity would remain intact um, to meet the needs of children, uh, but would be affordable for the community. The first thing we really needed to look at was staffing levels required uh, within the district. The team again thought about the class size <coughs> ratios and made a determination that our top priority for keeping class sizes at 20 or below would be at the kindergarten, first and second grade levels. And that um, <coughs> beginning in third grade, we would begin that transition towards class sizes of 22 to 24 children. And this would maintain right up through the eighth grade, the scheduling issues aside in the middle school. We, uh, in further discussion, uh, 
proposed one exception to that overall view uh, through our uh, special needs of uh, next year's fifth grade class, which has a slightly higher than average proportion of special education children. Being in classes of 20 to 24 not only impacts teachers' ability to work with those children, but also um, the kids that are right on grade level and in their classrooms, as well as exceptional needs at the other end of the spectrum. So with the exception of fifth grade, our overall thought was to look at priorities in K-1-2 and move towards 22 to 4 per classroom. If you have the handout, I'll walk you through what's happening in terms of numbers within the school. It's on the next to the last page in your handout under a table entitled Analysis of Current Enrollment and Class Size with Projections and Proposals for 91-92. You'll see in there that the two largest classes that we have in district now over on the 90-91 side of the page are kindergarten and our current fourth grade. Those are the levels where we felt it was critical to add some staffing for next year. So if you follow kindergarten, for example, all the way across, you'll see a projected enrollment for fall of 120. We stand right now at 115, and I think that's a, an appropriate projection for now. With the same number of sections, 15 to 16 in a room, with no staff invariance, okay? And we'll watch those numbers real closely all summer. First grade is where this large class, if you look under the projected line, would move up to about 151 children. It's the only grade level where I'll anticipate the class will actually go up a significant number of kids. That was true last year. In years before, we've had significant increase in every grade. But I think that because of the economy, once again, we can predict less incoming uh, children. So 151 children in first grade, we are proposing an additional staff member for a full eight sections uh, in, in first grade. Second grade, staying in the projected enrollment line, would stay the same at seven sections with 18 or 19 in a room. And I made a note that we could accommodate as many as 10 more children quite nicely at the second grade level if that should happen. Now third and fourth grade are the sections where we're proposing, the grade levels where we're proposing the decrease in sections. So that instead of being served in seven sections as they are now, our 133 third graders would be served in six, which would start us out at about 22 per room, a decrease of one teaching position. Uh, I make a note that we would be able to accommodate minimal increases only if we, if we staffed it at that level. And when I say minimal, I'm talking about the sort of under 10. Fourth grade, same thing. The fourth grade 137 uh, kids who are currently served in seven sections would be served in six. Class sizes of 23, which is a down, uh, a decrease of two sections of the fourth grade. Again, able to accommodate minimal increase only in that section. I'm only talking about maybe six. And in fifth grade, with that large class of 158, that we would propose staying at the fourth grade staffing level on into fifth grade, which is eight sections, 20 in a room, which would be an increase of one. And again, that lower size is based on the 20% or so special ed population within that classroom with a lot of consultation with the special ed staff in the intermediate unit, as well as the fourth grade teachers. That's their best recommendation. So this is some area where we are proposing making some staffing adjustments. Once we arrived at, at that understanding within team, and also a lot of discussion about some of the modification that may need to happen in classrooms that are moving from 18 and 19 in a room to 23 or 24 in a room, and I have some of those thoughts if anybody's interested in me sharing them later, we went ahead in team and looked at the other things that we could deal with. We looked at a downsizing, not an elimination, but a downsizing within foreign language instruction and within the integrated arts program. We also looked at every possible decrease we could bring to you in some of the many varied instructional accounts. And I'll kind of list those for you now so you have a sense of what we talked about. First of all, within instruction, we made a significant cut in the money we're asking for summer curriculum work. We have been, uh, had the pleasure of enjoying substantial support in the area of language arts, summer curriculum work for two summers, and last year added math as, as summer supported work. We would propose cutting $27,000 out of that request for this year and really focusing on our math curriculum efforts for this summer. 
We've just learned of some possible grant proposals available for, from our um, Southern Maine Partnership Network, which we may be able to work into some language arts assistance. But all we're asking the district for at this point is as some math work for about a week. We cut over $7,000 out of the instructional materials and supplies accounts. We did this by taking real careful inventory of consumable supplies and projecting ahead what our needs would be for next year. We also have come to the understanding that for the first time we may need to, in the lower grades, send home lists of supply requests to parents, uh, markers, uh, uh, notebooks. Some of the materials the school has always tried to provide, we may need to look for some parent support. Um, teachers will make very conservative decisions about adding to their supplies, and we also will not be setting up many new classrooms, and that's always an expensive endeavor. So this particular line was able to be decreased by $7,000 or more. Um, within the Media Center account, we looked carefully at postponing some equipment acquisition and repair, and we also looked to not fund a, uh, a visiting author program in the elementary level for fall. We took a look at our field trips and enrichment fund. This is a fund that started about four years ago and the Parents Association chose to make their financial support to the school be one of enrichment funding to the tune of about $3 per child. This would do things like cover the cost of a trip to the aquarium so that parents wouldn't need to be asked to pay for that dollar and a half entry. It covered costs like Chewonky bringing in the skeleton of a moose to a second grade classroom and not having to ask parents to contribute toward that cost of $45 or so. That uh, money was uh, very much appreciated and turned into hard dollars, which means the district began to own it two years ago. So we have had the privilege of four dollars per child available at each grade level for field trip and other enrichment opportunities. At this point we would propose eliminating that account and coming to parents uh, with requests for support when children uh, have opportunities to travel outside the school. I've been told by many parents that they feel very comfortable honoring that request and in addition I've set aside a little bit of money to assist those families for whom that would be a problem. And I'll be working hard to make those funds uh, accessible in a real discreet and respectful manner to families that need help. Within instruction, we are also, within that downsizing of foreign language, not looking at all to impact the integrity of, of the Spanish and French programs, but rather to find some cost savings within that account. And uh, we were able to reduce approximately a half a position simply by cutting instruction from four times a week to three times a week at both the fourth and the fifth grade level. The uh, foreign language teachers uh, helped us develop that and feel that uh, their curriculum will not be um, significantly impacted by that quarter time reduction. Within the integrated arts account, uh, there's a couple of cutbacks. It would be easiest if you could visualize this as about a downsizing of one third. Right now, all through K through three children get to enjoy arts opportunities in creative dramatics, poetry, and visual arts. And in fourth and fifth grade, two opportunities in visual arts and poetry. Either through resident artists that are on staff with us or through visiting artists contracted to come into the district. Our proposal, and uh, this really impacts K through seven services, is to reduce the integrated arts coordinator position by half, half her position solely responsible for the teaching of poetry. Uh, she's a gifted educator, and the teaching of poetry is a real strength. To cut out contracted services to the tune of about $6,000, and to offer our children instead a double strand next year instead of three of creative dramatics and poetry from the two staff members we have in creative dramatics and poetry. So our visiting artist program and visual arts would be eliminated. <coughs> we are hoping, however, to protect it at the third grade level where we uh, have focused on observational drawing for the past few years because it's a level at which we're trying to identify children that are highly talented uh, artists, visual artists. And through the observational drawing piece and a juried um, process at the end of the observational drawing <coughs> time, we're really able to find children that are showing outstanding talent uh, in visual art. And we would like to protect that particular uh, piece of the, of the outside arts. But that is within our budget at this moment. 
The, uh, we're also looking, at, in terms of field trips, to no longer fully funding the kinder concert program that um, the music department has sponsored for a long time, uh, where each grade level, K through three, does attend a concert sponsored by the symphony, especially for children, and would again turn to parents for some support in that regard. We were able to uh, cut over $5,000 out of the textbook line because uh, as we prepared for this influx of a large fourth grade, some uh, ordering of textbooks that occurred last year uh, was in preparation for this large class. In addition, the fifth grade teachers have done a nice job of evaluating which text they really needed to have and which could be shared. So we didn't buy 20 more social studies texts when in fact some sharing could occur and this large class is a bit of an enigma, at least for the next three years. So there's a significant saving within that line. Um, we also cut uh, a couple thousand dollars out of some language arts title acquisition funding. We cut some money out of Office of the Principal Accounts around travel and conferences. We'll be very conservative about any uh, conference attendance, although I would like very much to maintain our membership in the elementary school consortium, which means trying to get catch up with those people uh, nationally once a year if we choose the closest possible location. Um, so within instruction, we were able to come up with over $100,000 in a variety of costs that reflected some downsizing rather than any elimination to keep our class size priorities uh, for the youngest children with the exception of some special presenting needs in fifth grade mm -hmm. and then to look at any additions. I mean, that's, that's what we could look at as deletions. Our additions would be the extra first grade teacher, the extra fifth grade teacher, and given the larger sizes of fourth grade going on over to intermediate, we are proposing adding a half-time remedial teacher at the intermediate level. At this point, children who receive remedial services through a chapter one teacher, chapter one teacher at the elementary unit, that service ends after third grade. And in fourth and fifth, they're still presenting need for many of these children. As class sizes get larger, the needs will be more significant. So we would like to propose adding that particular position um, at this time. And I think that pretty much covers the major variables within this budget. I would summarize by saying, just to help sort out all of these pluses and minuses that I've reviewed with you, if we stayed at current class size and program levels, um, watching these children move up through our school, we would have been coming to this budget asking for um, an additional staff of plus one. As it is, we're coming to this budget asking for a, a staff reduction of two, which if you think about it, is a net of three less positions for Pond Cove for fall with the same number of children. So that's what where we wrap those discussions up. We'd be happy to answer any questions. Yeah. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, how many people would uh, would like to speak and ask questions or make comments? Could you raise your hands? One, two, okay. We'll start with uh, Jody. My name is Jody Sadloff, and I realize that traditionally um, these forums of budget hearings um, provide an opportunity for parents to scrutinize the budget proposals and probably more often than not to attack them and actually I'm here tonight because I would like to publicly commend Barbara and Nancy and the Pond Cove team for what appears to me to be um, a very considered and thoughtful budget proposal under the circumstances. I, it doesn't escape me that there are some significant losses and I'm sure some that um, are made with pain but I think under the circumstances these people have demonstrated a real capacity in a crunch time to um, identify real priorities and and make the best out of um, a difficult situation and, and frankly um, I'm basically very comfortable with these proposals and I just I think they deserve some praise for them thank you thank you I'm Gail Darling and I was here also on Tuesday to hear about the middle school budget um, I agree with Jody that that it's a it's a great job that you've done 
Um, I would, however, like to, to talk to two issues. Um, one is, as far as I can see, that there's not been much change in the expenditures for computers. Now, that, that's my professional field, and so you would expect me to speak in support of that. But I have to say that in fourth and fifth grade, I would prefer to see the money be spent on integrated arts and on foreign language. Um, I say that also because my daughter, who's now in sixth grade, went through fifth grade absolutely hating computers because she felt it was understaffed. And she didn't feel she was getting much out of it because there was never anybody to help her. Um, I really would prefer to see foreign language kept it four times a week and put off computer instruction, which many kids are getting at home anyway through games and through they're learning to type through games and they're learning to play and, and, and learning through play. Um, I would also say that integrated arts is one of the few opportunities for young children to come into contact with professional artists who really love their, love their field. Um, and although I have great respect for the staff at Pond Cove, I don't, I don't think that makes up for contact with real people who are truly committed to arts. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there any other uh, public comment before we have comments from uh, and questions from the members of the school board? Hey, Loretta, we'll start with you. Yeah, I have okay. just a couple of questions that, that are clarifications. When, when you say you are reducing the foreign language from four times a week to three, are you also reducing the time, or are you increasing the time on those three days, or is it, it it'll be 25% less time? Yes, so, the time would stay the same. So you're not adding five or ten minutes to the instruction? It's, it's, the it's literally uh, a quarter decrease of instruction. And, and the foreign language instructors are comfortable with this under the circumstances? Under the that, circumstances, under the they feel I have, they have not expressed a need to uh, revamp, for example, their curriculum. They feel this is a doable adjustment for them. Um, the, oh, the, uh, the visiting author program, is that going to be perhaps funded by the parents group or is, has that been looked at or I think that what I we hate to see uh, that go I know and and it's it's been a really viable and appropriate program for young children in terms of their identification with with authors it's also an expensive <coughs> program when we bring in authors uh, who are as nationally known as the ones we've been able to bring our thought Loretta is to perhaps rotate bringing in um, sort of nationally known authors in an every other year basis, and perhaps on the off year trying to identify some less expensive but very talented main authors, um, which we would not need to fund outside of any book sales that might support their visit. So we're not looking at saying goodbye to that forever. It's a very uh, um, well-respected program within the faculty and staff of Pondco. There are some parents who have taken exception, I will add, to the cost of bringing in professional authors every year. Uh, and we did feel that it would be appropriate to vary the national with the more local authors in a sort of semi-annual way. I missed that one myself. Yes. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Those are the only two questions I have right now. I'd like to make one comment on computers. I made this at the high school uh, uh, workshop. There is a program uh, that I discovered quite by accident at Harper Computer, whereby they will give the school one computer free for every 15 computers. And, and this is a statewide program, incidentally, as I understand it. Uh, for 15 computers that the parents buy, they will give the school one, in addition to those uh, people who have Apple IIs or some, app, some computers with, I think it's only Apple IIs, but uh, somebody could check that point. You could donate that to the school, and they would give you an appraisal of the market value of that, which you then could, uh, I presume, take as a tax deduction and buy your new computer, and that computer would count toward the 15. Uh, and Apple IIs are pretty good for keyboarding skills, and, uh, you know, they're not, uh, you know, DC-3s are still flying, and uh, quite successfully. 
Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't want to be on that. <laughs> I've been on, I've been on them recently. <laughs> well, I'm willing, I'm willing to take the risk with Apple, too. But, but that is an idea, responding to your point, where, where parents could organize. The parents' associations might take that one on and, uh, I guess, get into the computer marketing business in a way. And I understand the prices are quite good, and, and maybe other computer dealers have similar programs. But uh, Peter, if I could comment a little further sure. on that. Um, we, we are very much interested in increasing our, our hardware, obviously, at the Ponco Elementary and Intermediate level, both, because our goal is uh, to have um, a piece of hardware per classroom. But that's kind of a lofty goal in a year like this, which is why I didn't Priest, actually, I was kind of hoping Frank might have, you know, a dozen more to send our way with some replacement, but then he cut his computer requests uh, this year, too. Just to, to fill you in real quickly, um, the Parents Association is aware of the, of the opportunities from Harper. George Lyons has dropped off the materials to me. We've been sort of waiting to see how the parent survey came in about interest in supporting computer acquisition, both through fundraising and this program. And in fact, there's real strong support for that. Um, we have right now uh, enough computers only for quarter time access in first and second grade, kindergarten and first grade and second, uh, with about half time access in third, and no in-class computers in fourth or fifth, but access to those double labs. In, in the Pond Cove Elementary Unit, we would need 15 more computers to bring us up to the ability to offer one per classroom. And we'd need a full 14 in the intermediate level to bring us up to one per classroom. So, and we need one in the office that's really too. So we're looking at a total acquisition need at this point of about 30. I'm a little confused about some of the push for us to upgrade to Max, because when I talk to George, he doesn't want us to buy Apple IIs anymore. But um, we're real aware of our needs. I'd like to set some long-term goals for that soon, and was, but I didn't feel I could appropriately address such sort of lofty goals in this budget. Mm -hmm. Thank you. John? Uh, <clears throat> it's real sad when you go through these numbers, those of you who don't have them in front of you, and you look at all the minuses from this year's budget on the request. Um, and, uh, you know, many years we've gone through budgets in the past and we've, we could find a little money tucked over here, a little money tucked over there. And one of the things that makes Cape Elizabeth schools what they are is the Pond Cove School and programs like the language program and integrated arts, which are two programs you don't find in many schools. And I think that uh, as we head to the woodshed on Saturday morning, I'm, I think we should do our hardest to see what we can do to try to find as much as we can to put those kind of programs back in. I'm not saying we're going to find it, but I, I think that uh, all the principals and administrators this year have done an outstanding job of coming up with, with I think, very true and accurate records. But uh, if we can get D to perhaps uh, sharpen his pencil a little bit on uh, oil prices and things like that, maybe we can find some money here and there to do that. But it's very sad when you sit here. This isn't a fun year. Uh, we said this last year, and we certainly mean it again this year, that. It's no fun to cut programs like that. It's no fun to cut ever cut programs, but two programs that mean as much to this town and the kids as uh, integrated arts and language, foreign language are. Uh, I think we'll, uh, we appreciate the work that you've done and we know how difficult it was to make those suggested cuts at this point. Thank you. So. Thank you, John. Jan? Thanks. Um, under library and media, at the middle school and high school, um, it sounded like there was maybe a, I think it was a five-year plan or a three-year plan that they've been put into effect to purchase books and so forth. Is that, is the Pond Cove Library part of that or is there any long-range planning? I know that um, Shari Robinson, who's been with us now a, a second year, um, came in and, and to introduce herself to our library, much as the high school library and Joyce Bell did really um, was to, to take a survey, an inventory of, of titles we have available. And she's, she, she has acquisition hopes and dreams, but has been very impressed with the collection that we've managed to have. Um, she's, she's looking at service priorities, as high as title priorities at this point, in terms of getting titles to teachers. But that's a significant an issue in an elementary library that's just spending thousands of dollars on titles every year, to be honest. So we have plans, um, but our collection is in pretty good shape, and we'd like to be able to give as much a priority to in that other area, service. 
Can um, I answer that too, Jan? Yes. The librarians have been meeting regularly, and, and those plans that were drawn up at the other schools were really a mutual effort on the part of all the librarians, including uh, George Rollis, uh, the town librarian. We've done that together. Uh, Shari, uh, we, we've been get able to get from the state, uh, kind of sort of like all the state guidelines for um, what they're looking for in, li in libraries, what they're looking for down the road in terms of how computerized and technological libraries are getting. Uh, the middle school and the high school plans need revolve around uh, hardware needs and deficiencies and, and the focus as we did all of this together at the Pine Cove Library was around service. So, so that's uh, that's been a that's been a, a, an interlibrary effort. It, it wasn't isolated by building at all. Um, under Matt, can you Tell me, Michael, probably you would answer this, what the um, plans are for the uh, summer work as far as um, the math is concerned? Uh, what there's, kinds of There's things? a request for five, five half days of summer work uh, for K through five with, uh, with Gary continuing to head up the Pond Cove uh, math program development. And, and, and what, we, what we were able to do last year was the teachers began writing those math curriculum guides. Mm -hmm. um, each grade level wrote at least one complete unit. A number of the grade levels wrote, uh, um, went beyond that. Uh, the, plans, the plans for this summer to continue the development of that math curriculum guide, which will eventually um, completely redo the math program at, at, at K through one K through twelve is what we're aiming at. So we're continuing that process. Um, based on the workshop that, with the parents on math where they were asking about more skill work, is there anything in these days that will address that or has there been up to date? Gary Gary and the uh, math committee at Pond Cove and, and all the teachers at Pond Cove began writing the um, the computational skills unit next. So, so the units that are most done now are the geometry unit, computational skills unit. Yeah, we, we took we took that and and switched right to really mapping out the computational area next. So basically, it'll be next year when when parents will see the results from that. Or oh, is that right? Do you mean from the their computational <coughs> unit? I'm hoping they're seeing the results from it now. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and I guess my last question is, um, where you've written under gifted and talented, no significant program changes. I, I just, can you briefly describe what um, that will look like? Um, I didn't ask for any more staffing. Um, we still are, are offering support K to K-3 children through um, the work of our curriculum resource people in math and language arts. Um, and, and the uh, long range plan that we had through meeting mandated all in the fourth grade program in the fifth grade transition year, that goes on up to sixth for next year. And as Nancy explained, Tuesday night they'll be developing those plans at that middle school level. So we would be looking at extending um, the fourth grade uh, organizational plan of gifted and talented on it to fifth so that the same staffing can still uh, manage and instruct and coordinate that entire effort. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Thank you. No, is the year that we have to have our whole gifted and talented program. They have. pushed it back to yes. Oh. Um, just a couple of clarification. Okay. Um, we propose an increase of one fifth grade, one fifth grade class mm -hmm. but to only ask for an addition of one half fifth grade teacher. Mm -hmm. Can you explain where that's I'll try. coming from? <laughs> um, with some of the changes coming through central office, uh, our sense is that internally we will staff half of that position and we will need to expend new funds for the other half.
um, with a reduction in foreign language in K through five, and the high school asking for an increase of two tenths French teacher, will one of those teachers possibly assume that two tenths, or is that coming from staffing it's, within the high school? It's been discussed. Michael, are you clearer where that stands right now on the yeah. staffing issue for our current foreign language? The exact staffing is fluid. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a great answer. <laughs> I think what the bottom line is, is that there is enough flexibility in the staff that we have to cover that high school request. Um, the issues that are still somewhat unclear exactly who will do what, but we believe we have the capacity within staff. That two-tenths request of the high school is not to go out and advertise for it of somebody coming in. Okay, well, I think that's my question. So we're reducing in one area of our system to that be picked up by that yes. system. Yes, I'm sorry. I was that's what a harder asking. question, yes. <laughs> that's that's what what I was <laughs> <laughs> okay, the other thing is in guidance, uh, part of 8705, there is a transfer from last year transfer from the middle school account essentially to, to the elementary account. As it says salary salary aid and I believe that it's salary secretary. Yes. Not all of the costs associated with um, our intermediate guidance services around Lyle Kramer were was transferred to us last year. So mm -hmm. we're we're sort of evening the books this year a little better. And that includes the salary part of Part of Lyle Secretary, it also includes our testing costs, which come to you under line 1611. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're picking up. Remember, you looked Tuesday night and saw a decrease in there. Mm -hmm. you know, this is where that picks Okay, up. I understand that, but I think that should be classified as a salary secretary. There's a difference yeah, in, right. in how they're paid and, mm -hmm. and their contract. Okay. Um, I have a general question. I have nothing, this has, really has to do with the whole system. In the high school, the middle school, and Pond Cove, I've seen a general reduction in dues and fees. Can somebody tell me what the impact of these are? It seems to be system-wide. Somebody. Well, I can say from our behalf, and you can speak to the other, is simply that there are professional organizations as an institution that we join in order to keep current with professional literature and other uh, things out there, we're simply going to uh, cut off a couple of those or we'll pick them up personally. Okay. So uh, some of those will be picked up by uh, So we aren't going to be completely Absolutely not. Absolutely. Is that happening throughout the rest of the system? I think it's... Na Nancy's here. She can speak to it. I'm not sure Frank is. Where's Frank? Yes. Barbara's answer answer was very good, and we can use the same answer for the middle school. <laughs> okay. And Frank's at a conference. I just learned. So you answer for Frank, if you would. I think that's very substantially the same pattern. Okay. Is it something that we can sustain over time? Um, well, um, there are organizations that I think it's critical we belong to. And as long as the district can support that, we'll do that. As long as I or other staff members can personally support that, we'll do that. When I can't, I'll tell you. Okay. No. This, this may be an example of the type of uh, cut we make that after it's been made for 10 years, we found we, we really have impoverished ourselves. We it's will like not um, cut off our access to these uh, opportunities. Okay. I think that's why. I address this question from my concern. Yeah, yeah you're, you're absolutely right. It's, uh, uh, it ha can happen throughout a system like this. Uh, if, you know, last year, I remember when we got down to uh, uh, the last video camera and tuba and saxophone. <laughs> and, and of course, it's OK to cut them for one year, but if you cut them for you know, many years, then you have a band that's going like this. <laughs> <laughs> is when staff development, various kinds of professional stretching um, is seen as a kind of add-on or a luxury or uh, something in that uh, case. 
clearly we like to encourage in a variety of ways people to reach out and learn and grow. And I would absolutely agree that this should be a short-term kind of a move. Uh, we are, however, fortunate in this area. Belonging to the Southern Maine Partnership does put us in touch mm -hmm. with um, the UNAM grant. Uh, and you're aware from our mentioning it before, also I'm sure from uh, articles in the newspaper, um, we really will benefit. We already have benefited from that grant. And I just want to give a public commendation that uh, UNAM and other businesses in the area are trying to show in concrete ways a support for uh, staff development and <coughs> professional training. So we are taking advantage of uh, that, which costs us a little, but costs us nowhere near as much as it would if we had to fund it ourselves. Under special ed, I know there is a transfer of some of the services that are going, I think it's at the, the middle school. Okay. So that would That tuition explain. line yes. is, is absolutely transfer to Okay. Under contracted services, I see the cost going up. Mm -hmm. And I will call on my good friend Wayne Moore to tell us why. What we did, Charlie, with that was combine two lines, professional services and contracted services. We, we, I had broken those for several years to take a look at how we spent those. It was easier for me to draw that from our computer printouts, but it, it wasn't giving me what I thought it would, and so just to, to add a line to the budget made less sense than it, it started to. So I combined two, those two lines, contracted services and professional services, and now you have one. So they're really only going up about 1,200. That's right, and that's, that's an increase which is commensurate with what the private agencies and contractors that we use uh, request of us in the fees. Okay. Um, operation and maintenance, uh, can you give me some idea under contract building repairs uh, what's going to be done this year? Well, this <laughs> may be a new record. Either that or that watch has stopped up there, that clock. Uh, is there any other public comment? Uh, well, then, I think that uh, this is a new record. I would like to say something in closing. Uh, we've seen the same thing from each of our schools, with the principal starting out talking about how the preparation of the budget was a team effort. And I think it's absolutely, you know, essential that a successful budget effort be a team effort. And I want to commend all the principals and everybody who worked with them for, you know, having accomplished this this year. It's extraordinary when one looks at uh, where we were in December when we were looking at perhaps cutting as much as $800,000 out of our budget had we adjusted all our costs for inflation and continued all our programs. Uh, and we spent a lot of time uh, trying to determine the nature of the problem and uh, the superintendent and the business manager and I and others, and I'd like to mention particularly Bill Riley who helped us with our Excel program, uh, we were able to tell the principals what the problem was, we told the administrative council, and they obviously <laughs> you know, got the message and understood because it was clear, and then they really went out and did it themselves. And I think that it was an extraordinarily professional job, and uh, I want to commend all of you. Peter, I think that 
that we should commend you too because you spent, I mean, you've worked practically full time for the past few months. Time and a half. <laughs> yeah. Um, doing all of this for us and getting it on the computer and, and changing our budget process so that it is just unbelievably better. And I personally would like to thank you very much <laughs> for doing this. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I did not work full time, but. Uh, uh, it was definitely a team effort, and uh, so upward and onward. I hope uh, we're not going too much into the woodshed in the months to come, but uh, we'll see you Saturday.